Hello, everyone, and welcome to Be Admitted. Uh, my name is Dominique Ross, and I'm the School Counseling Department Leader here at Holliston High School. This is the kickoff event for college planning, which we realize is a very different experience for students during this unique time of COVID. We are deeply sensitive to that and hope to be able to help you in whatever ways you need to be able to navigate these uncharted waters. This event has a hard stop time of 12.15 p.m. due to circumstances outside of our control. As such, as you have questions, please type them in the Q&A section. You should see an icon for this at the bottom of your Zoom screen. The counselors are going to be consolidating questions after the event by topic and creating a Q&A document and possibly video clips to answer your questions. These will be posted on the school counseling website and we will notify you when the answers to your questions are posted. This event is also recorded and will be made available on the school counseling YouTube channel for you to view again should you need to. While we do not have an official evaluation for this event as we might typically have if we were in the building, please feel free to email your student school counselor with any constructive comments. So we thought we would have a little bit of fun and uh, present a Bitmoji version of the school counseling office. So on the top, we have the school counselors, Mrs. Taylor, Mont, Harwich, and myself, Mrs. Ross. And on the bottom row, we have our career services specialist, Mrs. Stu Stone, um, our school counseling intern who is working with Mrs. Ross and some of her students, Mrs. Jennifer Andrews. And last but certainly not least, our school counseling secretary, Mrs. Valerie Camille. So we welcome you today. We want to be sure that students are signed up for the Remind app, um, and it really is intended for students only. Uh, we need to be able to reach students by text. This is the best way to reach them. And this is the tool we use to communicate important information and to connect with students to schedule appointments and sometimes to support students who are struggling who we aren't seeing in the building. We do not see the cell phone number for the student and are careful about how often we communicate. Please feel free to take a screenshot of this slide if you need to refer back to it later. Okay, I'm going to put out a live poll for you to take so we know who's joining us today. Um, so I'm going to launch this poll right now and you will see it on your screen. And if you could please take a moment to answer the question so that we can see who's with us. Okay. All right, it looks like most people have uh, answered. So it looks like most of you have a child going through the process for the first time, but we do have some others who have a little bit of experience. Um, Today is very high level, um, but we have a lot of other opportunities to allow you to sort of deepen your knowledge regarding uh, the college planning process. So we're happy to have you all here today. All right, so the first message we really want to impart to you is that there is truly a college for every student who chooses to participate in the college planning and application process. And perhaps I can hear you, but we want a good college. So this is where I would challenge you. What does good mean? Define it for yourself. Does it mean you've heard of it? Does good mean your neighbors heard of it? Does good mean that it excels in an area of study that you may want to pursue? 
I'm gonna give you a few examples of schools that are lesser known, but that really are hidden gems in certain areas of study. The University of New England in Maine, for example, is known for marine science. Wagner College on Staten Island has a specialty in musical theater. Becker in Worcester is known for game design and is the home of Mass Digi. Sewanee University, which is 50 miles from Chattanooga, Tennessee, 90 miles from Nashville, and seemingly in the middle of nowhere, is home to 26 Rhodes Scholars and countless Fulbright Scholars. It has a renowned program in environmental studies. So as you see, most of these schools are not well known and sometimes scoffed at when they end up on college lists, but you might miss a hidden gem and a real opportunity to shine at schools like these. So don't count them out. Planning for college and finding the right college is about finding the right fit for you, the student. And that's from an academic, social, and financial fit perspective. And this is what truly makes it an individual process. Finding your dream school does not mean it is necessarily the hardest school to get into. It means the right fit. Your dream school may be a safety school that offers you a place in its honors college and offers you a sizable merit scholarship upon admission. In school counseling, we hear a lot of rumors regarding the college planning process that just are not true. Junior year being the most important year is one of the biggest myths still percolating out there. Every year is important because it tells a story, the student's story. And generally colleges like to see an upward trend in grades and challenge and in growth. They recognize that high school is a time of self-discovery and that it can take time for a student to hit their stride. I've see, seen students do well in ninth and 10th grade and for various reasons, they do very poorly in 11th grade and they still get into colleges that their heart was set on. This process can bring out the best and the worst in everyone. One key to staying focused on the individuality of the process is not to compare. What Sally is doing next door has little relevance to what you are doing. Just because so many students now apply early in the process doesn't mean that that is the right plan for you. This is not the time to follow the flock, but rather a time to pay attention to your own path. In this process, it is also important to consider all of the options. So perhaps four year college right out of the gate isn't the best plan for you. Perhaps you need a gap year to really find your passions, perhaps work, take some college classes locally. Perhaps a trade is the right option. After all, have you hired a tradesperson recently? Talk about a return on investment and an opportunity to run your own business and make a great living. Or perhaps a career in the military is the right move. Or a one-year program, a certificate program in surgical technology at a community college, after which you're making $50,000 a year. There is a tendency to think that four-year college is all there is, and it really isn't the only option. The only way to navigate this process with sanity is to accept that there is no gold medal. This is a journey, and we are here to chart that path with you. So we're gonna start by taking a very fun and close look at the factors that go into making admissions decisions. This game you're about to see was developed by a National Association of College Admissions Counselors and we just turned it into a cartoon video. So I'm sure that you're gonna find this enlightening. Mrs. Ross, I just want to interrupt, no sound. Please excuse us, we are experiencing technical difficulties computer sound. All right, let's try this again. 
Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very prestigious University of America. We're doing a short exercise here to represent an admissions process um, at the very prestigious University of America. We'll look at the evaluation process of nine very deserving candidates, and we are going to be considering them for three spots in the incoming class of 2026. This exercise is meant to show you that there are a number of factors that are considered throughout the admissions process outside of very objective measures like standardized testing and GPA. When we begin, you'll see all of our nine candidates lined up according to GPA from lowest to highest. But as we go throughout, you'll see that their position in the line changes according to these other factors that colleges are considering. Each year, colleges are given initiatives from their board of trustees or from the university's president. And these are all things that are considered throughout the process. We hope that you'll find this exercise informative and educational, and we hope it assists you as you embark on the college admissions process. Okay, so here we go. Move up to if you have taken an exceptionally strong academic program. So as you can see here, these two students are going to be moving up. An exceptionally strong academic program really just refers to the student's transcript which colleges, um, most colleges will say, is the best indicator of how a student is able to transition to their academic setting and if they're able to do the work at their school. So it is a very important part of the review process. Move up one if you play the oboe or viola. Move up two if you clearly stated that this college was your first choice by making an early decision application and commitment. Move down one if your intended college major is psychology or pre-med. With that, psychology and pre-med are two of the more popular majors in the admissions process. So many colleges will want to see students are applying to potentially less popular majors to increase their reach in those particular areas. Move up one if your intended major is environmental science. And to represent that point, environmental science at this particular school may be less popular, so they want students to be applying to that program. Move down to if you do not know any of your teachers well and had trouble finding someone to write your college recommendation. Move down four if when you typed your college essay, you forgot to change the name of the college you were applying to. This represents a pretty important point that students should really be very thoughtful and um, be very diligent in checking the details of their essays, but also represents the point that you don't have to personalize these individual essays. It's really fine to be general if you are applying, um, especially through a program like the Common Application or the Coalition. Move up to if you are a legacy. Move down one if you did not write the optional essay for your college application. Move down one if the topic of your essay was what I learned from playing sports. Move up three if you wrote the essay of the year, the one that was passed around the entire admissions office. It was so remarkable. If you plagiarized your AP US history paper and got caught, sit down you're out of the competition entirely. Academic integrity and dishonesty is one of the most, uh, the, uh, one of the things that admissions offices will really pay attention to and can really preclude a student from admission. And here at this particular school, this was a big factor for this student. Move up to if you will be the first in your family to attend college. Move up two if you participated in an enriching summer program between your junior and senior years.
move down to if you have participated in no extracurricular activities. Move up one if you participated in a significant community service project. Move up two if you are a varsity athlete, and if you are a varsity athlete and took second place at a regional competition in your sport, move up one more for a total of three. Move down three if you got a D in an academic course at the end of your junior year. This represents an important point that junior year is very important throughout the application process. But in addition to that, colleges will also be looking at senior year grades. So it is important to maintain that momentum going into senior year and not to succumb to senioritis. Move up one if you came to the college information session and introduced yourself to the college rep. And in the case of the student who just got the D, explained your extenuating circumstances. If you are a legal resident of Idaho, move up three. Colleges are always looking to increase the representation of certain demographical um, categories or geographic locations. And in this particular case, Idaho is an underrepresented state at the very prestigious University of America. So this factor would help the student throughout the admissions process. If you never gave your counselor any personal information to use for writing your college recommendation, move down one. If your last name is Belichick and the name on the sports complex is Belichick, and it's not a coincidence, move all the way to the front of the line and stay there. So as you can see here, we have identified our top three candidates and they are not necessarily the students with the highest GPA um, out of the pool, but they are students that have performed fairly well academically, but have had enough, a number of other very strong characteristics that really contributed to their application. And the very prestigious University of America is excited to see their attributes um, as a part of their campus community. So, it gives a little bit more perspective as to the importance of the holistic review and that everything is considered, not just the numbers. We hope that you found this exercise helpful and we hope that you continue to reach out with any questions or concerns. Hello everyone and welcome to the very... Okay. So hopefully that gave you a, a nice idea of how various factors contribute to the overall decision that is made. Um, it's a very helpful exercise to go through to really see how things can shift uh, and what matters in the admissions process. So now looking at an overview of the agenda for the rest of the presentation, really this process is about preparing to tell your story, your story through the transcript, your story through your activity resume, your story through your essay. This process is not about gaming the system. Apply where you want to go. So this is a bird's eye view uh, that we're covering today. The school counseling website, which you should bookmark, has a section for Be Admitted that provides resources and worksheets for everything we're discussing today. These are resources that in the past we have provided as handouts. And this next slide is a QR code that will take you directly to the Be Admitted section of the school counseling website. So we would encourage you, if you have your phone with you, to hover your camera over this QR code and it will bring up a box at the top of the screen that allows you to access that site. We will have this QR code again at the end of the presentation if for some reason you miss it here. I'm going to hand this presentation off to Mrs. Mont, who will continue. Okay. 
So there are a number of factors to consider when thinking about and planning for the kind of college that students may be interested in. Mrs. Ross talked about what school is right for your students, and that's an individual question that takes careful thought and planning. When I talk with students in my office, they're always asking what school is right for me. And as a family, it might be helpful to put a list together of what is important to your student about colleges. Developing a list can help students uncover what is important to them and will make the list of schools more manageable. And so when thinking about schools, there are some things to consider. Location and size tend to be the biggest factors. Some students wanna go far away and some wanna stay close to home. So when it is safe, we would encourage you to road trip it and test it out. In thinking about size, think about what size and how the overall population of school can impact the student. How big is big? How small is too small? Ask yourself these questions. In thinking about classes, does a school have lectures or discussion-based classes, seminar style classes? What are the sizes of those classes? Do students know their professors? What are those relationships like? How does size impact their relationships and experiences on, on campus? Those are important for your student to think about. Next, majors. It's important to think about options for students and can they identify one or two majors at each campus they might be interested in. Many students can change their minds and how flexible is the school for these changes? It is important to think about options so they do not need to relocate to another school. Diversity. Is the student body diverse? Or is geographic diversity important to your student? Now is a great time to talk to them about culture and environment on campus and what is important to them, what's gonna make them the most comfortable. Housing tends to be another important factor. So ask questions. Does the college guarantee housing? Is the, is the housing on campus or off campus? Have you had an opportunity to see the residence halls or common spaces? This can help give the student an overall feel of the environment on campus. Again, it speaks to that comfortability. The cost of attendance, otherwise known as COA. The cost of attendance is the number to be mindful of when looking at the financial aid package. This is the cost that families will be paying for your child to attend college. There are other factors to consider, to consider that tend to be important including internship opportunities, abroad experiences, work experiences, um, maybe it's athletics or extracurricular activities or clubs. So again, when you're thinking about finding a match with your student, making a list will go a long way in sorting through options for students. Now let's jump to the parts of the application. Today, we wanted to share the parts of the application to be mindful of for your student. Now, every college application is different, but in general, this, these are the items that are included for each application. The transcript, as you saw in the GPA game, is included on every application, and it speaks to the types of classes taken, degree of difficulty, and variety of courses, the grades earned, and the unweighted GPA. The essay is an opportunity for students to tell their story. I love reading essays um, for students because it makes the students come alive and you can hear a student's viewpoint. There are essay prompts included in the Common App and on most applications that students can choose from. And students can get a jump start on this if they want to. Colleges look for evidence that a student can write well and support their ideas. Another piece is the teacher recommendation. The teacher recommendation speaks to the student in the classroom setting. Teachers can highlight what they see in the class and what relationships they may have had with the student. Typically, we would suggest for students to think about one junior year teacher to write this letter. And now is a great time to think about that for students. Maybe students had a teacher that they may have connected with first semester. And if not, second semester might be a great opportunity to form those relationships. If students are having a hard time thinking about a teacher, it's okay to ask a teacher from sophomore year who they think knows them well. Again, understanding that this may be a trying time um, and it may be hard for students to 
reach out to a teacher in this environment. So if they feel more comfortable with a sophomore year teacher who they feel really knows them well, it is certainly okay to ask that teacher to write a letter of recommendation. But again, second semester is also an opportunity to adapt to a new learning environment and engage in relationships with teachers. The council recommendation um, speaks to the essence of the student and their experience. So we love writing le letters of recommendations for students because it allows us to talk about them and our experiences working with them over the four years that they're with us at Halston High School. And when we write, we, we speak about the whole student as much as possible. And to that degree, we take feedback from teachers and parents. So on the Halston High School website, on the code that Mrs. Ross just provided, you will have access to the parent brag sheet. And this is an opportunity for you, yes, absolutely to brag about your student parents. And the reality is, you know your child the best. You have seen them grow up from those kindergarten days all the way through now, junior and senior year. And often parents highlight growth and development through education. Um, sometimes they talk about the stumble that a child has overcome. Uh, maybe it's a disability. Um, maybe it's a passion that they've pursued, or maybe it's something difficult the family has endured that they'd like us to include. So we'd love to see it through your eyes, parents, and we honor that information and the opportunity that we have to write the letter of recommendation. So again, the parent brag sheet is available to parents to complete. The application also asks for extracurricular activities and student interests and passion. It is not necessarily looking for a list, but what the student is most passionate about. Standardized testing scores may be conveyed in some format. And at this time, the information is still coming in and determining if, a, if SATs or ACTs will be needed. But again, each college and application is different. I also wanted to talk about demonstrated interest. While campus visits may look different in this global pandemic, the value of researching schools prior to visiting is hugely important. Colleges are being very creative and they're offering virtual campus visits, open houses, sessions for families. Um, they're offering self-guided tours and drive-through tours. And these are valuable ways to see schools and that connection to the school will go a long way in the admissions process. So again, when it is safe and if possible, we would suggest a campus visit. Again, this is a good opportunity to see the environment of the school and determine a good fit or match. Is this child comfortable on campus? What does the environment look like? At Holliston High School, we're also offering college rep visits. In the fall, we brought in over 80 colleges to meet with students during DSB, and we are currently booking up springtime visits with students that Mrs. Harwich will tell you more about. So it is a great way for students to quote unquote meet with college reps and talk to them through Zoom. And then there's also regional and national fairs, all done online this year. And there are a number of resources for families to utilize. So again, we know this year does look different, but there are still are plenty of opportunities to learn more about what each campus can offer to students. Now I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Taylor and she's going to talk about testing. Hi everyone. So I am tasked with talking about everyone's favorite standardized testing. And as Mrs. Mont just shared, things look a little different this year with the pandemic. And I'll talk a little bit about that as we go through. Here on the screen, we have a short quiz where you can look at the statements and either agree or disagree with them to determine whether the SAT or the ACT is a better fit for your, um, for your student. So for example, um, looking at, if you are looking at more agree um, answers to the questions, it is likely the SAT would be a better fit for the student, whereas mostly disagree would indicate the ACT is probably a better fit. If you're kind of even across the board, the student will probably test fine um, either SAT or ACT. So it's really about finding the right standardized test for the student. It's just like finding um, a college. It, it's a, all about fit. And colleges do not have a preference SAT or ACT. It's um, really up to the student. So Looking at the SAT and the ACT in a bit more detail, as I mentioned, there is no preference by the colleges, but both tests are measuring what students are learning inside the classroom and outside of school. And it's really looking at the ability to problem solve, apply reason, and think critically. The SAT is measured um, on a 1600 point scale, 
and it includes two sections, evidence-based reading and math. Previously, it did have an essay section, but that, uh, an optional essay section, but that is being discontinued by the College Board, the organization that runs the SAT. The ACT measures five different areas, English, reading, math, science, and an optional writing section, and it is scored on a 36 point scale. There is a concordance chart online on our website, or you can even just Google SAT, ACT concordance, and it will show you what the SAT means on the ACT scale and what the ACT score means on the SAT scale. So you can um, get a good sense of if the student has taken both, which one might be a better, um, better indication of how the student can perform on standardized tests. The one big point that I do want to mention, and you should have probably seen this on the quiz that we gave on the previous slide, the ACT has a calculator section, or the ACT allows the use of the calculator the entire time throughout the exam, where the SAT has a calculator section and a non-calculator section. So for students who feel the need or feel that they need the calculator in order to be more successful um, for the math, we would encourage them to at least try out the ACT first and see how they do. Other than that, though, both tests are rough, roughly the same amount of time, but they um, do say the ACT has more questions overall, so some students may feel a bit rushed. So really, it's about kind of trying them both out and getting a sense of what might be a better fit for the individual student. At the bottom of the slide, you can see that box outlined in yellow, and that is um, drawing your attention to the test optional schools. Prior to the COVID pandemic, test optional schools were becoming more popular, and this is exactly what it sounds like. Schools are not requiring students to submit standardized testing throughout the application process. They are looking at other factors or weighing other aspects of the application more heavily in order to uh, determine admissibility. But um, now with the COVID pandemic and many testing administrations being canceled due to the physical space restrictions, a lot of schools are moving towards test optional, test flexible, or not even requiring SAT or ACT tests um, throughout the application process. So this website here, fairtest.org, is probably the best um, resource in terms of keeping the most up-to-date list on which schools may have eliminated their testing requirements. So we hope that you will find that a useful site throughout this process. Many schools have already indicated that they will um, be continuing their test flexibility policies moving into the next application cycle. So at least for our high school class of 2022, many schools are abandoning those requirements. So that should hopefully alleviate some of the stress of trying to find a test site over the next um, over the next year or so. With that being said, some schools are still requiring it, so there will still be options. Um, so moving forward, the SAT and the ACT are offered um, throughout the year. Um, coming up, the next administration would be offered in March, but it typically does require a at least a month advance notice for registration purposes and the um, test is about $50. Uh, the ACT, same kind of schedule, the next testing would be in April. Many of the administrations moving forward have been canceled or you may register and receive notice that the administration will not be held. So it's really important to stay on top of those um, emails and just be sure um, that your test will be held. Holliston is not offering the test this year um, due to the, the COVID pandemic, but there are many districts in the surrounding areas that are offering it. One other important note um, about standardized testing, you may have heard subject tests being um, thrown around. They were previously known as the SAT twos. Um, SAT subject tests are being discontinued by the College Board, so they will no longer be required as part of any school's admissions process because they are not being offered. Um, so just important to note. Switching gears um, from standardized testing, I wanted to briefly discuss the ways to apply to colleges. And we'll certainly go more in detail about this when we meet individually with your student. Um, but the most important or the most popular way to apply to colleges is through the common application. There are roughly 900 colleges on the common application. Essentially, students are filling out their 
all their information just once, they write one essay, and they're able to submit to any one of those 900 schools. There may be some school-specific questions that they have to answer. This is commonly referred to as the supplement, um, but it makes it super, super streamlined to get things done. Coalition is the newest kind of competitor in the mix, and it, the platform itself is used by about 130 different colleges, very similar to the common application. Again, one kind of centralized application, and then an essay that can go to any one of those schools, and there may be some school-specific questions that students have to answer. And then lastly, the institutional application. The institutional application may is used only for that particular college. There may be an essay, there may be more specific questions that the colleges want to get their answers on. Um, but for example, in Massachusetts, um, schools like Endicott, uh, Westfield State, these are schools that are only allowing students to apply through their individual school application. With all of that though, the majority of our students are applying online, um, typically going to the school's website, going to the admissions webpage, there will be a link on the best way for the students to apply. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to Mrs. Harwich, where she will discuss a bit more about Naviance. Hi everyone, I'm happy to spend some time with you today talking about Naviance. Naviance is a web-based program that is specific to Halston High School. It has opportunities for our students to explore both career and um, college planning. Um, they keep activities organized in a resume and they can connect with college reps when they come to Halston High School to visit. Students have been using Naviance since ninth grade and hopefully capturing some of their information and their activities on their resume. And ultimately for our juniors, we want students and parents to use Naviance to think about what they want in a college experience, find schools that fit their needs and wants and develop a comprehensive list of schools. Every student, as you can see here, um, the login for Naviance is online resources on the Halston High School um, webpage. So the link is right there. And when you click on it, I think the most difficulty we've had this year is with students not being able to figure out how to log in. Um, we've gone to a single sign-on, which is different than previous years. So students use their Halston High School Gmail login to get into their Naviance accounts now. So once you log in, you will be able to see this next screen, this next slide. And um, one of the, the parts in exploring and thinking about colleges is just using this link, colleges I'm thinking about. Um, we're gonna take a peek inside, you know, this particular link to see what the students are gonna see. And we'll go ahead and do that right now. So as you can see from this page, um, there is a delivery type, which indicates whether a college accepts the common application or another electronic application. That computer monitor is this indication. The CA just indicates that it's a common application school. There are few and far between, but that postage stamp down on the bottom indicates that USPS is the delivery for the material supporting a student's application. There are other links available on this um, site, so you can compare me and then there's scattergrams and there's also a link that will take you directly to the college website. This is also another place where you can find out deadlines. So there's early action, regular decision, early decision, rolling, um, multiple deadlines is usually the standard and if you just click on the arrow you'll be able to find out some more information. Compare me is a tool that's also available in here. So this takes the student, it lists the student's GPA and SAT scores if we have it for a student. Sometimes we can just add it in to um, make it so it compares me more easily. So this is an opportunity for a student to see how they compare to other students from previous graduating classes of Holliston High School. Granted, it's based on GPA and SAT scores alone. A green check indicates that they're above the GPA or SAT and a red X indicates that they're below. Take that with a grain of salt and look carefully because oftentimes it's within a very short measure and um, still a good fit for a student. This is my favorite feature in Naviance. This is called a scattergram. Um, I like the visual representation. I think it's easy to understand. 
The silhouette that we see on the screen is indicated where the student falls based on only two factors, GPA and SAT scores. The dotted line that you can see on the screen has the average for previous students who were accepted at 3.11 and the average SAT score of students who were previously accepted in um, graduating classes that had come prior to this student as 1171. You can see on the right hand side, there's a legend, the green boxes are accepted, X's are denied students. Um, and there are lots of other ones that you'll see once you log into an account. But you can see that this is a, um, a good fit school for this particular student. There's a lot of green X's around them and they fall right on that average line. Um, once you're looking um, on the Be Admitted slides or the Be Admitted website on the um, school or link on the school counseling website, you'll see others that are reach and safe to help figure out how each of those fits into a category for a comprehensive list of schools. Again, this is just about the competition to get in. It's not necessarily an indication of whether a student um, could do the work at the school. Our house and high school graduates are exceptional and um, they probably could do the work at most of the institutions in the United States and around the world. But the competition to get in is fierce. And that's why we're asking students to develop a comprehensive list of schools that have you know, target good fit schools that have reach schools and that have safer schools. So this is something else that we use this year. Um, I think it was one of the most rewarding experiences for our seniors. Um, they had the opportunity to visit with college reps um, from a lot of different schools. And as you can see for the spring, we've already had Endicott and Catholic sign up and other schools as well. But this is where you can see what reps are coming on what days. They come to visit us virtually and they do it during DSB. I think probably the hardest part was having students log in on time. Um, once the time hits for the start, the, the link goes away, but Mrs. Camille was great trying to get that information to our seniors this year. But for our juniors, when you're looking at this and trying to keep track of who's coming when, um, it's important that you keep the schedule and um, you log in on time with the link that's available there. Um, so it's a great opportunity. We're looking forward to having our juniors participate in this way um, this spring. So the last slide I'm gonna talk about is financial aid. We encourage every single family in Holliston to apply for financial aid. FAFSA is a free application for federal student aid. This is used by every institution that accepts federal money. So two-year schools, four-year schools, both public and private use the FAFSA. It needs to be filed every year. Many states and colleges set priority deadlines by which um, you must submit your FAFSA form to be considered for the aid that they administer. Each year, the FAFSA becomes available in October. There are some scholarships, even though you may not apply for need-based aid at a school that require you to complete a FAFSA. The biggest one impacting our students is the COPLIC for the UMass um, state system. So it's important and we would encourage families to file FAFSA. A lot of things can change over time. And if a family, a parent were to lose a job, et cetera, et cetera, if you are an on-time filer, it's much easier to talk to financial aid offices. CSS profile and institutional applications are in addition to the FAFSA. And those are things that you will find out if they are needed by the college um, on the college website. There are scholarships available, both local and national. Local scholarships come out for every senior class late February, early March from the school counseling office. If you just Google scholarships for college, you will get a number of different um, links that come up. Going Mary is something that we're exploring now with students and families, and we would encourage you to check that one out. Wired Scholar is another one, um, but Google can be your, your best friend during this process. And last but not least, NIFA. Massachusetts Education Finance Authority is a wonderful resource. They offer college financial planning webinar, webinars um, all the time. Um, we usually host an evening event. Um, and we're looking into that again for this year for something for our families to explore. Um, but even if you just pick up the phone and call them, they have their staff is wonderful and they can provide you with a lot of necessary information if you get stuck in the financial planning process. I'm gonna turn it back over to Mrs. Ross. 
So as we look forward to what the timeline is for this spring, we like to boil it down to what we call the three R's. So looking at research and visiting colleges, uh, trying to develop that initial list and really utilizing February and April vacation for this if possible. Um, and it is possible to get a sense of what your preferences are by visiting local schools, even if the student wants to apply to schools further away. It gives them a sense of, of small versus big and you know, rural versus city-based. Requesting a teacher recommendation is something we recommend for the spring prior to summer break. Um, students can ask now if they wish, but um, just sometime before the summer. And then registering for the SAT and ACT test, which as you know, is um, something that's in question depending on the schools that you're looking at and whether they are test optional. Additional opportunities to immerse yourself in this sort of college planning process and really get a better understanding of what's involved. Uh, the Insider's Guide to Admissions is a mock application review that will be pre-recorded. So you will watch members of our community work with admissions professionals in evaluating mock applications. And those mock applications will be available on our school counseling website for you to look at as you're watching the video so you can really understand what it is that the admissions professionals are talking about and looking at. The release date of that uh, experience will be April 14th in the afternoon. Senior Speak is really an opportunity for parents to hear from parents and students to hear from students and a series of recorded testimonials regarding the college application process, what they would do again, what they would do differently. And those will be posted to the school counseling website, the YouTube channel, and those will be released on an ongoing basis throughout the spring. Looking at the career speaker series, uh, Mrs. Stone has been putting together some wonderful panels on different uh, industry experience and once to twice a month during transition block, students will be able to zoom in and learn from and engage with leaders and innovators in specific fields. So recently we had the marketing panel and it was uh, well attended and it was really successful for the students. There was great conversation. So those dates for those different panels will be emailed out. Uh, we're working on finalizing those right now. And then the bread and butter of this process is the student and parent meetings. So you can access your school counselor's online booking calendar through the school counseling website. And you can add yourselves to the calendar. The students can have a meeting with a parent. They can have a meeting on their own. They can do both. Uh, so we encourage you to please meet with the school counselors um, to discuss your individual plan. Just a couple of tips for sanity. So this process can be truly devilish. It might at times seem like you as a parent are applying to college, please don't do that. <laughs> we say here at HHS that behavior is communication. If your child isn't engaged in the process and seems disinterested, they probably are. Either because they're afraid of the next step or they're just burnt out and they need a break from academics. If you let this process consume you, it will. So remember, you're not applying to college, they are. And try to follow these two tips to keep your sanity. Set a weekly day and time to do college talk. This is good for the parent, it's good for the student. It could be Sunday at one or Wednesday at seven, same day, same time each week. All other time is off limits because we need to remember that the student's number one job is to finish their academic um, experience here successfully and to stay healthy, both mentally and physically. Please do not listen to the rumor mill. Uh, other parents and other students will drive you crazy with rumors and advice. And if the advice is coming from one person's experience, you have to take it with a grain of salt. Do your own research, call the college, call your school counselor. And as a final note, we want to just make sure that we talk a little bit about private college counselors because we're noticing that families are signing up. And we want you to know that if you do, which is a family decision, 
private college counselors are not a substitute for your school counselor. You still write the letter of recommendation and as such check ins with the school counselor are critical. And there are also internal processes your student must follow to make this process go smoothly. Most, if not all of private college counselors do not know our process at all. And that can create difficulties for students in the long run. And with that said, we're going to end this webinar. We so appreciate your time. Um, please, I'm going to leave the webinar open um, for a minute or two. We went a little bit over, but you're more important than where we have to go. Um, so uh, please put your questions in the Q&A and we will release those answers um, shortly. Um, and again, if you missed the QR code earlier in the presentation for the school counseling website, here it is. Uh, we wish you well, be well, stay warm, and we look forward to seeing you over Zoom soon. Take care. Bye-bye.